Shatter's back, and this dude is, he's pissed that we moved. <laughs> Roll it. Y'all just gonna sit there and listen to some Q&A while I mukbang the fuck out of these M&Ms. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. Damn, now I got saliva, dumbass. Uh, how do people, how do people mukbang? I ate three M&Ms and my, my shit is like waterfall right now. How do you even talk while you're eating a big ass giant Atlantic King crab for an hour? Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano the Third. Y'all guys are the third family. If you're new here and you're not subscribed, consider subscribing at the end of the video. If you like what you see, bottom right hand corner. Now I said last video on Q&A part one that I was gonna get to every single question that was on my community post. That's why we have part two. The fuck, Layback's got a ASMR channel? All right then, do you young blood? All right, I think I left off on Miriam GL. I, I know you've talked about your Hispanic roots before and I'd like to know how much of that culture still lives with you despite living in the United States. Greetings from Mexico. I mean, in terms of the culture, I feel like the food, obviously, I can I can throw a rock and I can hit three taquerias that serve, the be that serve better tacos than the upper northern portion of the whole United States. So food, obviously, and I would probably say the other, like the other main one is gonna be a sense of like community and then a sense of like, of strong family ties. But I would say those two things, food and family. Next, Edu Godoy, or Godoy, who is the artist, musician, band that inspires you the most with their music? I would say, I mean, it's the same people that I react to. Eminem was very inspiring to me when I was younger, just because I had the opposite mentality of like the rest of the world. They were all up in arms about what he was saying. And in my mind, I was like, okay, if you don't like it, then just don't listen to it. And also he has the free, he has the right as an American citizen to say whatever the fuck he wants about whoever the fuck he wants. So my mentality around what people could do with just their words changed completely when Eminem came into the game. And then also Linkin Park was huge because that was the first, that was the first rock band that I was really about. And then Incubus came around in high school and Incubus showed me like the type of lyricism and poetry that was possible on the mic. Brandon Boyd's poetic capability is out of this world and his voice is like, for me, his voice is one of the top 10 ever. If I had to point like directly, it would be those four. Muhammad Hamad, I'm a new subscriber. I came from the NF and stayed for the third fam. And that's like, that's like the thing that people say about the channel is they came for a certain artist, but they stayed for me and they stayed for the energy of the channel, which I really appreciate. My question is, what's your favorite NF song so far? I think I answered it on the last one, but it's only and it's uh, If You Want Love, by far. Ashley with three Y's. If Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear and Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair, then Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy, was he? That's a bar. Haku, if you ever met The Weeknd, what would be the first thing you'd say? I would wanna say like, love your work. I would wanna say like, I've been a fan from the very beginning, but I feel like everybody fucking says that. I'd probably say, what's up, man? I really respect your work. I really, res really respect your body of art and the way that you completely came in and flipped R&B completely 180. And, it, and basically you were a pioneer for the type of R&B that's out right now. And that I have this channel and I would tell them I went through the entire after hours in order and I changed people's opinions about who they thought the weekend was they didn't realize that you were as deep as you were and I feel like that's I feel like that's a fallacy for a lot of people's argument against you because they only hear what's on the radio and obviously the radio hits they're the weekend but they're not the weekend that all of your diehard XO till we overdose fam fell in love with and that's it I wouldn't be weird about it wouldn't ask for an autograph wouldn't ask for none of that like I'm I'm 31 years old I don't ask for autographs anymore next get to killing during your popular monster reaction you were clearly very musically knowledgeable even Ronnie Radke Rad Radke is that how it's pronounced pointed it out what drove you to learn so much about vocals and instruments I asked because more people just listen and appreciate but you clearly want to learn about everything that goes on in a song I've always just had like a passion for music and a passion for trying to understand I, I took high school high school, not even high school, I took middle school band. So I learned how to read sheet music and I learned about progressions and you know, basically the way the way things work on sheet music, I could read sheet music and, and hear the song basically. But I grew up in a time where there was no like explanation. There was no genius.com where you could just go to. I had to form that knowledge on my own. And that was part of the fun. You know, there wasn't so many distractions when I was growing up and I just paid attention to every little detail. And in terms of being able to pick up wordplay and pick up and understand the way these lyrics mean and, and what the artist actually means within the lyrics more than just the surface level, that's probably because, because I'm an above 
above, above average writer. I don't think I've ever gotten anything less than a 95, even on things that I didn't study on, just because I have that way of, of manipulating the English language and manipulating the sentences to make them sound, to make them sound better than what your average person would just put out. Ru Hoon, who is the greatest artist in your lifetime? Jay-Z or Drake? That's it, it's just those two. Kanye West is, is up there, but not necessarily for his rapping, even though My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy could arguably be the best rap album of all time. But sales wise and success wise, Jay-Z and Drake are just so far above everybody else. Benji C. Jean, is it Jean or Jean? When you find an artist that you like that really goes in, such as Andy Minio, how do you resist not listening to more? It's actually, I'm not resisting. It's just my, it's just my, my schedule, my like my schedule of my life is so busy that it's hard for me to listen to new music other than reacting to it. That's a good question though, because that's normally one of the most negative comments that I get on the channel are one, you pause too much, and two, there's no way that this is your first time listening because you broke down way too much. You have had to have heard this before did your research and then came on and recorded what you researched and I'm like I'm flattered for one that you're giving me an insult but it's actually a compliment and I'm also I'm also flattered for two you thinking that I'm actually gonna put in that much work I'm too lazy to do all that but I appreciate the backhanded compliment Heath story how's the move going I bet you're stoked about having a house now you know having a house is dope but at the same time you have to realize that when you go from renting to owning all of the problems of the house are be are now yours Yes, it's dope that I like the my payment is going toward equity that I own in the property But like for example, I have a flea infestation in my backyard and it's gonna cost like $400 For, for somebody to come in and spray that shit and kill all the fleas because Nima can't even go outside And that's not something I had to worry about in an apartment because it was part of my rent terrible lightning How much music does one have to listen to in order to be as all-knowing about music as you are a shitload? And I'm not talking like a shitload like just the ones that are on the radio you have to like download the album and go into the deep cuts. When you listen to rap, just be under the impression that everything that's being said means something else at the same time, especially when you're listening to somebody crazy lyrical like Eminem. Cam Scheidler? Scheidler, Scheidler. If you could change one thing about your career that led you to this point, what would it be? Start YouTube sooner. I feel like if I started this YouTube channel like three or four years before I actually did, the channel not only one would be so much bigger, but I'd be able to hopefully have been full time to where I could make more vlogs and make things that actually make me money on the channel. So I'm not just strictly relying on Patreon and I'm not relying on like the very few songs that get that don't get demonetized. So I would hope to have some type of bigger brand at this point. And then number two would probably be to go into the financial advice and wealth management like role that I'm trying to get into right now that I'm that I'm studying for my testing would be to like find that job sooner. You could make easily six figures doing that without a college degree because college just it just wasn't for me. C. Mitchell, lyrically speaking, after your reactions to M where you've caught his triple and sometimes even quadruples, have you stumbled on any other rappers who's done just as much technically rhyming? There's really no one that does that that amount of technical that te that amount of technical writing and that technical skill but I can't think of anyone who rhymes triples and quadruples like on a constant regular basis Tom besides Chester who's got the best vocals out of everyone you've reacted to probably Tyler Joseph from 21 pilots because his voice is so it's so unique and on top of that he's got crazy like octave range and then Ronnie obviously from falling in reverse the weekend obviously is gonna be the closest thing to Michael Jackson we are ever gonna hear but out of the ones I've reacted to Chester Ronnie Tyler Joseph and then the weekend I don't know why but for some reason the name is being cut off on this one all I get is to Jobsy. I don't know if that's even said right. So what are your future plans on dropping any new raps or something? Because we all know how good your ears and brain work while dissecting a rap. Maybe you could use that as a tool. I, I mean, I don't write. I haven't written a rap. I've written like, you know, poetic, you know, things, but I haven't written a rap in quite some time, which is different because now you got to keep it on beat. I might try to do something here in the future just to see just to see if I still got it. Michael Garzon. Have you ever listened to rap consencia hip hop in Spanish? For instance, Residente Calle. How do you say 13? And the answer is no, because I obviously don't speak Spanish, so I don't get like the intricacies of Spanish. And because I have no idea what they're saying, I don't listen to them because at that point, I might as well just be listening to like house music because there's no lyrics and it's a, basically the same thing if I don't know what they're saying. Silent 311, you a boy said that Kanye is a musical genius. So would you vote for him? Why? Yes or no? Explain. No, I wouldn't vote for Kanye West. The dude is like, he's literally, he's bipolar. He takes, he takes like 
like medicine for that. Two, you can't just announce like four months before an election that, oh, you know what? I think I wanna run for candidacy and then they're gonna give it to you. You have to go through all these things that he hasn't even gone through. But I will say the army would have some fire ass kicks that would probably sell for mad retail, like mad markup on StockX. Gas Spection, if you had to listen to one artist for the rest of your life, who would it be? I would just tell you to pull the plug because I can't just listen to one person. Next, PJ Cho, how does it feel to have artists watch your reactions? How often has that happened and what feedback have they given you? How often has that happened? Uh, first off, it's dope. They're not being cordial and they're not being nice because I'm giving them like screen time or they're seeing how I'm reacting to their music. It's like, oh, you know, this guy's got, you know, this guy's funny or whatever. Like they give me legitimate, I respect this dude's opinion because he comes across so eloquently. He comes across like he knows what he's talking about or he knows his shit when it comes to music. So that's dope. And in terms of the amount of artists that have done that, Machine Gun Kelly, he, he like, you know, made a video. It's on my Twitter, it's pinned on my Twitter. Ronnie, Falling in Reverse did it. Third one was Andy Minio. So them three, I think, are the only ones that have done it so far. Evil Morty, if you can collab with one artist, who would it be? J. Cole, easily, not even a question. I wouldn't be intimidated by like going to someone like Kanye West or going to someone with some crazy ass pen like Lupe Fiasco. I'm not saying that I'm at the level of J. Cole, but I feel like he's more chill, like we would just vibe. Keshav Kular, I think that's how it's pronounced. Earnest, very honest and simplistic question. For how many years will you be doing these breakdowns? Thinking about the day that you say you're ending your breakdowns and reactions, such good reactions would be very disturbing. It'd be a very disturbing thought for me and I believe all of the family. I mean, I don't plan on ever, I don't plan on stopping them. I plan on expanding the channel. So there might be like, there might be other things musically related. And then obviously there's gonna be vlogs and that aren't music related. That's just me having a good time. They might change in the way that they are just so that way once I get like a bigger audience, you know, I would want to make some type of monetary gain on the reaction so i might like i wouldn't chop it up so much but i would give you commentary on the most important portions of the song and the most important person portions of the lyrics as of right now the way the breakdowns and the way the reactions are they ain't stopping anytime soon prayas dandona do you think joining lucas has the potential to be one of the goats like eminem says or do you think kendrick and j cole are better that's a good question kendrick is definitely better than joiner lucas his grasp on the english language he's he's like a wordsmith so is joiner lucas i know that he has that like reverse song where it goes all in one direction and then goes all in the other direction and he has I'm not a racist and then he has that song about like the kid who who befriended the black dude and then the black dude ended up shooting him in the back but it's on a whole nother level of complexity with Kendrick Lamar and then J. Cole I feel like Joner Lucas could be as good as J. Cole I feel like their pen game is pretty similar in terms of how they write but J. Cole is just like a he's just a superstar he was built and meant to be a superstar Sal Moreno why haven't you responded to Stevie Knight LMAO just I didn't even know that he tried to contact me to be honest and then I went through my DMs and I didn't see them unless he did it on Twitter I went through my Instagram DMs but I didn't see them you should try to contact them though maybe a collab vid could occur I don't even know how a collab vid would work but you know that'd be dope if that happened Bob Bezo rate the weekend Drake Bruno Mars from worst to best impossible they they flip all the time I would have to say Bruno Mars is at the very end only because he only has three albums like he it's he's like Rihanna right now it's been like four or five years since his last drop and the weekend drops more often Often, and obviously Drake drops way more often and Drake is like I said the biggest artist of our generation but Bruno Mars is dope one of my favorite songs ever is by Bruno Mars uh if I knew Daniel Diaz when will you be dropping a song banger I gotta write one before I could drop one also you're the only quote-unquote reactor in YouTube who does it justice don't get me wrong no life is good but he's just that a reactor I feel like that's his person I feel like our channels are exactly what our personalities are he's very emotive and he's very funny and like his vibe is just positive but the way that he shows it on his channel that's the way that he intakes music you know he has a fun and good time with it my channel I'm a little more chill with it and and I also am a little more like analytical whenever I listen to music without y'all when I'm just listening to music on my own I take in the music exactly the same way that it is on my channel so I think that his channel is dope I think that my channel is dope I don't want to compare them just because they're they're two completely different styles of channels and if he tried to do my channel it wouldn't work and if I tried to do his it wouldn't work because our personalities and our personas are different but I feel like I would vibe really well with with no life chat i feel like that's one of the homies you know it's sean and hitting me with the deep ones right now what's the meaning of life and where does music interact with that the meaning of life is just to you know live it how
however you want. There is no right or wrong way to live life other than what societal construct tells us the way we should live life. You only have one life and in the grand scheme of things, it is impossibly short. So live exactly the way that you wanna live. Understand that there are societal rules and it's not like, oh, you gotta conform to society. No, these rules are in place for every type of species. Apes have the same type of rules. Cheetahs have different type of rules. Penguins have different type of rules, but they all, they all have those innate instinctive rules that they live within. But if you wanna go and get that tattoo and you don't think it's a mistake, then go for it. Go ahead and go get it. If you wanna listen to this type of music, go for it. Go ahead and go get it. If you don't wanna have kids, that's completely fine. Not everybody, not everybody has to leave a legacy or wants to leave a legacy. Cause at the end of the day, what is a legacy? It's planting seeds in a garden you never get to see. I wrote some notes somewhere in a song someone will sing for me. America, you great unfinished symphony, you sent for me. You let me make a difference where even orphan immigrants could leave their fingerprints and rise up. That's Hamilton, by the way. Zach Jackison. Jackie son? Jackson? Why the house move? And are you feeling fully recovered from that damn Rona? Definitely 100% recovered. It was a bitch. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Unfortunately, my dad got it but from taking care of me. It's something that you want to tell them no, but even if I said no to him taking care of me, like I don't want you to, I don't want you to get sick, there's no way that he would have said, okay, I'm going to stay at home. So all that to say that I fully recovered, but then there was a reason that there was a slowdown in videos and a slowdown on Discord and Patreon and you know, every, basically everywhere. That's why I was basically dealing with it for like six weeks. I had it, then he had it, and we're, we're both finally kind of coming out of it. So it was a bitch. But the reason for the house move is because I just, I got tired of living in a small ass apartment. The apartment was like 600 square feet. You know, rent was reasonable, but I was there for three years. You, you're dealing with apartment bullshit. That guy that tried, my, somebody tried to break into my car at the apartment. Here I got like, yes, I have the house problems like pest control. My electric bill is gonna be way higher, but the payment was reasonable and I own this piece of property. Like I could do whatever, if I wanna paint the, all the walls solid black, Black. I could do that if I wanted to. Turbo Chicken, do you ever re-watch a video after you upload it? Yes, I just did that like last time. I, I uploaded it and as soon as I uploaded it, I re-watched it and I was like, why didn't I just premiere this because I'm here watching it. I could have been chatting to y'all live if I did that. Second question, do you ever get mad when you catch a bar in a song that you didn't catch while making a video on it? Yeah, I do. I'm like, damn, why didn't I, why didn't I hear that the first time? And it's actually rare that it makes it to the published stage where it's on YouTube for the public without me catching the bar because normally Normally I would catch it during the editing process. And then I would put like a black screen and say, oh, I missed this bar right here. It's only happened a couple of times where people in the comments would be like, yo, you missed this. And then I'm like, oh damn, I did miss that completely. But I love when that happens. Cause it's like, yo, I'm, I'm teaching y'all. I'm breaking down for y'all. And then sometimes y'all break down for me. And it's just, it's just a cyclical nature this relationship. Shaz Vin, what is your daily job? Are you a police officer? I really wanted to know this. I'm definitely not a police officer. My daily job is I'm a banker and in about three months, I'll be a fully licensed financial advisor. Hopefully that'll be my daily job. I'll be a wealth manager basically. Unless y'all give me to a million subs and then pfft, this is what I'll be doing. Drew Blackwell, would you ever do a live stream? Just something kind of laid back and chill. Actually, yes, I've said this in Discord that I actually do want to start a stream, but I want to have like a legitimate setup. Probably once I get in, once I finish making that studio room, then I'll probably decide to do it. And so that might be a couple months off at least. Vengeance with all these different letters in there. In your opinion, why don't YouTube rappers ever get mainstream big? In my opinion, it's because they don't have the X factor that's required to make it off of the platform. And the platform, the demo demographics that listen to YouTube rappers on the YouTube platform, they're completely different than the demographics that actually listen to normal mainstream rap. And I feel like a lot of YouTube rappers find success because of the direct the direct connection that they have with their fans and with their subscribers. But if a YouTube rapper tried to transition into the mainstream, the, the, the demographic completely changes. Like Tom McDonald, he'll never ever be mainstream. And the reason for that is because he's writing songs to the people that are his current demographic and his current demographic is not your normal rap listener. That's not the normal person who intakes rap music. Crip, same thing. I'm pretty sure if we pulled up his analytics and we saw his demographics, it's gonna be mainly males and it's gonna be mainly white and that's a complete opposite of rap. In order to make it in the mainstream world, you need to appeal to the original people who listen, which is which is black people. But then you say, what about Screwface Jean? He's a black artist who's on YouTube and he's a YouTube rapper. Why can't he make it? It's just something about his music and it's not, it's not bad. It's just the tone of his 
vocals and also sometimes he can be kind of petty and sometimes his raps are just strictly wordplay, strictly bars. And like the Slime Shady EP, I didn't listen to it, but you're making an EP that's based off someone else's originality. So while yes, the bars are original, you're kind of piggybacking off of one of the greatest artists in the world. And there's nothing wrong with that because that's what a lot of people who intake YouTube rap like. They like to hear remixes. They like to hear remixes of, of popular artists. You taking their beat and seeing if you can do something of similar caliber, but that's never gonna appeal to anybody off of YouTube because you need to have more originality than that. So I think it's a number of different reasons why YouTube rappers are, are gonna have a hard time breaking into the big time. But at the same time, I don't think they necessarily want to because they like they like that direct connection with their fans and they know that they can't get that off of YouTube. KJ, how do you enjoy listening to music? Do you prioritize beat selection, lyricism, or is it mood-based? It is 100% mood-based. Like, I don't wanna listen to Lupe Fiasco when I'm not in the lyrical mood, when I'm not in the mood of like wanting to be in awe of somebody's pen game. Listening to Lupe when I don't wanna listen to him can be tiring. Listening to Travis Scott when I wanna listen to something like Lupe Fiasco, it's like this isn't enough substance to me. But when I wanna vibe out, Travis Scott is the one that I'm gonna do it with. KDD, SDD, what are your regular main life goals outside of YouTube and regular work? YouTube what is a life goal, so it's hard to say outside of YouTube because getting to a certain level on YouTube is a goal. Living down in SA and the Valley, and just so people know who don't live in Texas, the Valley is like Eagle Pass and then down like the Rio Grande all the way to Brownsville and South Padre Island. That's considered the Valley. Maybe not South Padre, but definitely Brownsville. Living down in SA and the Valley, what's your favorite cultural pastime that you enjoy about South Texas? Breakfast tacos and fiesta. That's it, that's the answer. Fiesta is a week long, maybe eight days of just straight partying throughout the city. But then breakfast tacos, bro. <sighs> You don't get, you don't look like me without having a couple breakfast tacos, you know what I'm saying? Israel Swastegui. Yo, fuck that one up for sure. What mu what music do you listen to daily? Six thumbs up, so people wanna know, I guess. The music I listen to daily is generally 100%, not, not 100%, you can't be generally and 100%, absolute. It's gonna be rap and it's gonna be R&B for the most part. When I feel like I'm in a shuffle kind of mood, it goes everywhere. Anywhere between Adele all the way to Travis Scott. Inflatable Mattress, have you been following up on all the Cryptic 21 Pilots code stuff leading up to the never ending music video they've had up since June 21st? No, I have not been. When I when they announce an album, I'll go way back in and I'll and I'll catch all that shit to make sure that I know what's going on for the next album. JW, would you ever start reacting to stand up, breaking down the jokes? I actually want to react to stand up. I have purposely been holding off on certain people's stand up just because I want to react to them. Like Anthony J. Jasinski, or you know, he's got like that very, very dry delivery. He leaves you hanging on the edge because I know that it's very punchline heavy and it's normally dark. I can't wait to react to him but I so I purposely not watch his specials but yeah I want to react to I definitely want to react to them and somebody put minty guy doesn't explaining jokes make them unfunny when it comes to explaining jokes for reaction videos I probably wouldn't just like straight up explain it like I'm breaking down a bar it would be more so like why I thought that joke was funny it's more explaining the way I took it <laughs> this dude's username Caesar chat the fuck cup <laughs> J I mother F and D. Yes, I know I need to get to Jid. I wanna I, I wanna break down some of my favorite songs by him. And he said, Oh, what's up with Throwback Tuesday or Thursday? I've been waiting ever since you did Iman. Fuck what I said, it don't mean shit now. I don't put two or three videos out a day like some of the other reactors do. Like I know laid back, I know that Stevie, you know, Stevie Knight has like a Marshall Monday, then he has a throwback Thursday. It's hard for me to do that because I edit my videos down to make sure that I don't have any pauses or I don't have any stutters when I'm talking. The editing process takes time so that's why I only put out one video a day and because I work a full-time 40 hour a week job so it's hard for me to make more than one video a day and because it's hard for me to do so it's hard for me to prioritize older songs when there's constantly newer songs coming out you know established G yo bro have you spent time in the UK never ever I've never even been overseas actually be good to see more UK artists on here and I agree it's just that I know that when I know that when Shaq was reacting to UK a lot he actually had to stop reacting to them because he made so many videos that got blocked it's one thing to get demonetized. I don't mind getting demonetized because I can always one, appeal it, and two, if the appeal doesn't go through, which most of the time it doesn't, the video at least stays up. So the work that I put into editing, you still get to watch it, you still get to intake it, you, and you can enjoy it. But if it gets blocked right from the beginning, I can't do anything about it. So it almost seems like a waste of time. But I will get to some UK artists saying the same way that Shaq did. If I get a couple of blocked songs, I probably have to stop. And then you said, you know, you should look at Fire in the Booth clips. I actually plan on doing an entire, like, maybe two weeks three weeks, but just straight nothing but freestyles on radio shows. Lance Gardenhire, if you knew that you were gonna die in a week, how would you spend it and what is your final meal? Bro, I would obviously spend it with family. 
um, for the most part. I wouldn't do anything that I wouldn't normally do. Like I wouldn't go skydiving and shit. If I, I don't want to die skydiving when I know I'm going to die in a week, like at least give me the extra three days, you know? But final meal, this is going to sound so basic, but it's going to be a mixture. It's going to be so basic. It would be Olive Garden and it would be their chicken gnocchi soup, their chicken carbonara main dish. And then it would be sweet bread, like Pan Dulce, like Hispanic sweet bread, like just Hispanic pastries. That would be my final meal. S dot M dot. I thought you were short, but I saw you walk through the door in your new house and you seem taller than I thought. How tall are you? Maybe it's just the camera effing with me. The camera has a lot to do with it because it's a wide angle lens. I also don't stand up in my videos, so that makes a difference as well. But I'm 5'11". I mean, taller, but it's not tall, tall. It's taller for Hispanic, but not crazy tall. I R Group Boy, your most anticipated album slash albums are artists of 2020. One of them already came out, you know, The weekend. J. Cole, I definitely want to drop something and hopefully him. Dreamville didn't really count, the Re Revenge of the Dreamers for me. Uh, and definitely fucking Rihanna, man. She needs to drop something already. It's been like six years. Kendrick Lamar too. Bruno, Bruno Mars too. Adele too. They're all, they've all haven't put out an album in like five, six years. All of them. Flubbert, have you ever considered branching out into other genres on the music on, on the channel? Congrats on 100K. Thank you. And I have, I mean, it's just, it's just hard because a lot of genres don't, they don't take the wordplay and they don't take the lyrics as they're not as complex and they're not as meaningful in some genres. And that's a broad stroke. You know, there's always the artists that pay really deep attention to the lyrics that they write. But most of the time, in terms of wordplay and in terms of, you know, manipulating the English language, rap is gonna be rap is gonna be the biggest one that does it. But I do wanna hear like R and B, I wanted to hear, you know, like like Halsey, I wanna hear her music because apparently it's very emotional. I can react to emotional music the same way, but it's just not gonna be as in depth because the lyrics are straightforward. Cohen Stolk with the fucking conundrum of a, of a question. <laughs> Would you rather be beautiful slash handsome but stupid or intelligent but ugly? <laughs> I'd probably say I'd want to be right where I'm at right now, you know, probably floating around a six and a half, seven, but your boy's got intellect and wit and humor. I'm basically Lil Dicky, but Mexican version. Like I'm not the best to look at huh, all the time, but what's up here, that's just gonna grab you. We getting pussy with our personality, you know? And I didn't make that up. That's a Lil Dicky song, personality. Dark Matter, what were your symptoms of COVID-19? By the way, glad you recovered. Psh, bro, I'm glad I recovered too. That shit was no joke. I I've said this to my family, I like, after getting it, I can understand why people are dying. Like that's exactly what came out of my mouth. The symptoms were so severe that if you had even three fourths of the immune system that I have, there's a chance you're not gonna make it. And I know two people whose parents, like personally, two people whose parents who have passed away. It's the most tragic thing, but the symptoms were awful. The main one that people don't realize is like depleted energy. I'm talking about exhaustion like you've never had before. Getting up to go to the fridge to take out a Pedialyte to make sure that I am hydrated wore me out. The fever, the cough and the energy depletion. It's just out of this world. Paralyzed. I answered your question last time, but this is a separate. What temperature do you set your thermostat to? When I, I don't know what it's going to be now, now that I have this house and it's twice the square footage, so I'm, I'm going to have to probably try to keep the, the, the electricity bill low. But normally at the apartment, I kept it at 73. During the day for like Nima and Cheddar, I kept it at 73. When I was there, it was 71 degrees. And when I slept, it was 68 degrees. Morgan Baird, do you watch MLB? Psh, bro, I'm passionate about baseball. I played baseball for like 15 years of my life. I went to college for baseball before I dropped out. Do you watch baseball or do you like the Cubs? I do like the Cubs because my dad is a diehard Cub fan. I like the Yankees because my mom is a Yankees, diehard Yankees fan. I'm obviously Texas fan, Texas Rangers, just because I'm from Texas. And Houston, I'm normally a Houston fan, but right now I don't even want to say that I am because I'm ashamed of the whole cheating scandal. Yes, they cheated. Yes, cheating is a part of baseball. But whenever you think of cheating in baseball, it's because you bested somebody. You bested somebody somebody mentally, but digital electronic assistance, like having a camera looking directly into the catcher. Nah, 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 that shit's bullshit. But yo, I don't know how many questions I answered this time. I'm sure this video is going to be like 50 minutes because I got a little more long winded on some of the answers, but I'm ending this one here right now. Part two, obviously there's going to be a part three. If you watch this one and the last one, I really appreciate it. But this is your first one that you watched. Go back and watch the last one. If you want completely different questions from different people. And we're probably gonna have to go to part five or six now that I think about it, but I'm getting every fucking question answered. But that basically ends today's video, ladies and gentlemen. If you liked it, consider liking and leaving a comment down below and then subscribing if you liked it enough. And you know, you're probably already subscribed if you're watching the Q&A, but if you're not, consider subscribing. Follow your boy on Instagram and on Twitter. If you wanna see the Machine Gun Keller reaction, hit up the Twitter down in the
in the Discord. It's pinned on my Twitter, so you can actually see what I'm talking about when I talk about Machine Gun Kelly reacting to my reaction. Hit up the Discord if you want to talk to me. I'm not in there right now as much as I normally am because I'm going through the whole move process and that's taking a lot of time. But once I get it settled back in, I'll be back in the Discord every day just like I normally was. But that's it for today. Like I always say at the end of all of my videos, go out there in the world, love and care for one another, love and care for each other. And I'll catch everybody on the next video. Peace.